Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special birthday video. It's my birthday today. So I'm going to make a kind of short video where I just uh, talk about uh, yeah, stuff that I worked with for many, many years ago, like 20 something years ago. I have 24 uh, years of experience with IT. So of course, it was some other technologies that um, that I used when, when I was uh, young, so to say. And uh, some of the technologies that I remember was um, IBM's Rational Application Designer. I did, yeah, that was a kind of a, almost a must if you if you worked with the WebSphere, uh, WebSphere Portal and the WebSphere, uh, yeah, if you worked with the WebSphere Portal. And of course, there was a service bus because this was in the time of uh, enterprise architecture where you had, you had to have a bus where all messages came through this bus and then... Uh, then, then there was some kind of administrator that could actually uh, stop traffic and, and also maybe uh, put small, uh, 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 take traffic from, from one source and then actually place it to another destination also. So it's like a bus where, 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 yeah, where it was actually a fear that, um, of course, like the, that was the center of all of, of, all of this communication. It was, not, it was not REST and microservices. That was not that uh, normal. It was SOAP services. So it was big XML services. And there was a lot of uh, code generation that had to be done in order to, um, yeah, the, the, in order to, to uh, actually communicate with other services. So when we're talking Java, then we're talking about the Java EE. Uh, which fortunately stopped in a version seven seven version right here. It was it was, it was no fun. Um, it was a bit of um, yeah. It was a bit of it was, it was very challenging. And um, but with the, with the right tools like IBM uh, Rational uh, Application Designer, then it was actually then the code, the all the boilerplate code, could actually be auto generated from a WSDL file, a web service definition uh, file. And then, um, and then, and of course, we we made what we what we had to uh, what, we had, what we had to make at that at that point in time. So um, it was heavy. It was Java. It was it was not very. It was not. It was, it was no fun. It was. Um, yeah, I think it actually that scared a lot of people from actually uh, from actually programming Java that it was so heavy and there were so many there were so many interfaces that had to be created and implemented and uh, yeah, there was a lot of. Um, um, yeah, there, there was a lot of overhead when, when we had to when we had, when we had to write something and we had to communicate and do something. Then there was not all of those uh, cool frameworks that we have today that makes it much easier. Um, yeah, then I played a lot with uh, ESP Active Server Pages when I when I started my uh, my career, so to say. Uh, then I then ESP was very very hot. Right now, it's difficult actually to find something with the classic uh, ESP because there's something called ESP.NET, uh, which is Active Server Pages.NET. This, this is the, the newer version of ESP. And if you don't know it's ASP, then it's um, you you generate HTML server side with code like this. So it's a bit like JSP. If you know JSP, Java server pages, then it's almost the same. So you you generate something inside the body like this, um, and how you organize your code is totally up to you. Um, you can you can have some yeah of course you can have a lot of helper uh, files to actually where you can place uh, uh, where you can place uh, functions inside. Um, but it was uh, it was quite primitive, but it actually worked. So these ASP pages were were very um, popular uh, at, at some point in time. Um, so. Yeah, and here's an example. If you want to see that, this is my first ASP uh, script right here, and then we have the results to to the right right here. Another thing that I worked a lot with, or not a lot with, but but what was necessary for development in the old days was an I I S server and an internet and an, an internet server that was that it was not it was not that common to use Linux or Linux. It, it was even though that Linux was actually there, there was a lot of um, there was actually some some HTTP servers for Linux. But the normal thing was actually to buy something very expensive and something very heavy, and then uh, that usually required IIS to to run. Um, yeah, so internet, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, so the internet show uh, um, was, was something that we used, uh, the IIS from Microsoft. <clears throat> it's uh, it's cool to see that it's still, um, it, it, yeah, it, it's still, still uh, being supported. So then Genesis was something I played along uh, a lot with. There was a, a call center application. In, in old days, it was very, very expensive um, to get in license wise in, in a company. So it was only very big companies. Even the, the, the software was uh, was quite good and it was uh, modularized, so it was easy to put on new modules. Uh, so as a developer, it was actually quite okay to develop up against. There was a lot of um, 
license uh, walls. There was a lot, lot of white license walls where there were things that were, that you were not allowed to do. Um, Unless you bought a, a bigger license, I remember that that was uh, so. Um, but right now it is. Uh, it looks like the prices are. They, they look much uh, lower. If I go when I go go and look at the prices, and then there's, it also looks like there's of course uh, Genesis. They actually um, they, they they give software as service, software as a service, uh, just like many other um, many other software developers do nowadays. That that is where the money is. Uh, it's not like heavy licenses like in the old days. <clears throat> you need to provide some some services. You need to provide something um, that can be just used by 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 logging in and pressing buy on on on, uh, yeah, on a website. Then I played with Asterisk. This is an IP uh, gateway, so it's like a it's like a phone central, your own phone central uh, that uses IP. Uh, that can be yeah, the use IP telephony, the use IP protocol um, to connect um, phones. Actually, that's what it does. You can have a um, you can have a, a phone number. You can actually have your the regular phone that can actually be uh, directed to a um, yeah, to a number. So and, and that, uh, then your SRI server can be set up to um, to actually listen to listen for communication on that number, and then you can route it to uh, yeah to whoever whoever you want to route it to. You can also place a, um, a interactive voice machine in front, so um, so you would like just play you know the wait music, and you can create cool menus uh, like press one to to talk to Mike, etc., and uh, press two to uh, to like this video, etc. <laughs> All those things. Um, uh, that, that's it's a it's a cool product and it's, it's still being used right now. It's open source. That's also an awesome thing, and it has a ton of um, extensions and plugins and yeah. So that, that, that uh, I remember that was awesome, and there was no limits right here. There was no payment. There was no pay payment walls like there was with uh, other products. Uh, then Jenkins was something that was the, that was actually already there for for like twenty years ago, um, and I, that is, this is still going strong, because nowadays CI it is not so much about which uh, which program that actually triggers the CI pipeline, because many times you would actually Dockerize your CI pipeline anyway, so this, it doesn't matter if this Jenkins starts it or if it's uh, Circle uh, CI or maybe it's just um, the GitHub uh, builds uh, actions. That they will, they will just start your CI server and then deploy your application and build on the yeah, first first build 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 your application, push it to a container registry, and then deploy it in a Kubernetes cluster. That that is usually just done with um, in a containerized way, so that, that then, then you can easily change your um, your CI provider. Uh, then it should be easy to change your CI provider. Uh, nowadays, it's easier nowadays than it was in the old days, because in the old days everything actually ran on the server itself. It was, it was not containerized. And that's uh, actually one of my biggest points. When what I, yeah, that, that is that in the old days we did not have Docker, and Docker has just made it so much more fun and so much easier to actually be a developer nowadays. It's, it's much easier to be a developer nowadays. We can just we can just spin up. Um, first of all, the hardware we get nowadays that's uh, that's there's plenty of room for for spinning up. Uh, yeah, a Redis server or a, a Mongo da database server or Nginx server, whatever we want to play with, we just spin up the Docker image. Maybe we want to play with RabbitMQ, then we just spin up RabbitMQ locally, and then we can see how it actually works locally before we uh, before we change our application and then uh, place the code into production. It is also much easier. The the way that we put place things into production nowadays are much easier than it was in the old days. It uh, in the old days it was like a, a whole there was a flow, and it always in up with that you had to make some last minute changes on the server uh, anyway there was not it was not normal to actually have um, to yeah, to have the configuration um, yeah, to have uh, to have uh, your configuration and your infrastructure as code you would, you would just go and change stuff directly on the server then you change some environment variables no one that no one knew about maybe you documented it somewhere that that uh, someone uh, no, no one would actually read read about it the, the, the place where you documented it um, so, but that was old, good old days uh, where you you did that. Nowadays, you would always have you, you would have your conf you would have your configuration and you would have your infrastructure as code instead, and then you would of course push that into your Git repository, and then your CI pipeline would actually deal with it and then change your your setup accordingly, uh, because then everything is documented and there's uh, revision control, and you can easily roll back if there was anything any problems with that. Also, the Kubernetes cluster after we got that is, is also awesome, and of course, uh, yeah. 
the, the, the it, it's awesome that first we can we, that we can actually put things into production in uh, in, in within normal hours because there, there's no almost no no to, uh, downtime or there is no downtime because first a new pod is being spun up if everything goes well then uh, the old pod will be taken down if there was any errors if one of the, if the health check or the live check fails then uh, then the old uh, pod will not be taken down and uh, and everything will just continue as it was before so that means that there's no downtime when uh, usually no downtime when um, when place, putting things into production with kubernetes yeah darker darker compose a huge um, a huge plus it makes it much more fun to be a developer nowadays um i think also now that i got some experience of course with programming you know i kind of know um i'm not that much in, in doubt for of of, of um, what the whole setup should be um yeah that, that's that's, that's uh, one of the cool things about be, being uh, older that uh, yeah you have all of this experience that you can uh, that, that you can use and and uh, yeah and it's everything is a bit much uh, it's a bit more clear it, it's much more clear when you start a new uh, task you know kind of um, right away how it should actually be solved um of course there can be something with caching uh, that would usually show itself when you have something into production and you can see okay this is actually a bit slow let us optimize um there are some some developers like to uh, optimize before things have actually gone into production and um yeah, that is not i don't think that's the right way i think you should first put things in, into production because maybe the performance issue that you think are there are actually not there and then when you think when you get things into production then you can create your redis cache if you want to you can spin up a redis database that is insanely fast if you have if you have any need for using a cache then use redis it is it is really really good one of the newer things that also uh, are here now is Node.js. Uh, uh, no one would have seen that JavaScript would have this, uh, would, have, yeah, it would have this popularity and this uses that it has nowadays. JavaScript is used for both backends and frontends nowadays. Um, yeah, and GraphQL is also one of the new things that um, that we definitely didn't have in old days. We, we didn't even have REST services in old days. Um, uh, I've, uh, yeah, it's not. It's not always. It's not always a good idea to use GraphQL. Just, uh, just, just whenever you have a problem, you should, Sometimes it's actually more. It's more simple to use the REST interface instead. And um, the, one of the arguments for using GraphQL so, is sometimes that then you can scale, and then you can have this GraphQL gateway, and then you can um, communicate with uh, an unlimited amount of services uh, out there. Um, but there's a bit of overhead with uh, actually creating the, all of these GraphQL schemas, and um, yeah, sometimes a good old-fashioned REST API is um, is the way to go. I think that's that's actually it. I just want to create a short video here on my birthday. Uh, I really like to, of course, as you know, to record videos and to to talk about technology and then to, to show off some um, yeah some some projects and show off technology. Um, so, and I, I really like your comments. Thank you very much for all of the comments that I get. Um, there's a lot of inspiring comments where I, then I can create maybe two, three, four more videos when I when I get your comments. And then of course, there's also sometimes where I don't have time to create those videos. Um, in the future, I would like to actually create some more of those um, more, more of those X, uh, yeah, more XML videos actually. Uh, XSLC. I would like actually like to try, create some transformation, more transformation videos where we transform XML maybe into some uh, Excel spreadsheet or maybe into something else. Um, yeah, that's actually it. When I when I look back, um, another thing is, uh, but when you just get when you just got started in the business. Or as a developer, then a salary is actually something you probably think a lot uh, on um, when you are a junior trainee. Then your salary is, is probably not that good. The best way to get a better salary is to actually swap jobs, to take a new job. Um, and I actually did that. Uh, there was a, it was not only because of the salary when when I quit my my, my first job. Then. Um, <clears throat> And it was actually also because there was a lot, of, a lot of work suddenly, and I was kind of the, the I was a key, um, I was I was a key person, so I was kind of the, the hero developer, uh, and so I was I was very very busy, and I would like to get a bit less um, less work because we were working always. Um, so I actually I quit my job, and what happened? Uh, my boss actually came in and said you can get like what was it like. Uh, 
25 percent more uh, salary or something like that. It was it was a it was a huge uh, it was a huge thing. I remember that. And then uh, all advisors said that Mike don't take the don't don't take the extra salary because then people would know that you're just there for um, for the money and maybe they would also know that uh, maybe they would also think about okay when when will you then change your job anyway or you will probably then just get uh, yeah you you'll probably just quit your jobs in a, in a year anyway. And then and then there's a lot of arguments for not uh, for not taking a proposal proposal like that. Uh, also, the, there's also that, that, okay, then you were actually worth 25% more before, but then they just wanted to uh, optimize their own bottom line by actually giving you less salary. That That's also a way to look at it. But I, I actually took, I, I, I took the extra salary and um, then I stayed you know, one and a half year or something like that. And then I quit my job again because I would like to try something different uh, this time. And again, there was a lot to work. Uh, there was a lot of work. I think the, the workload was, yeah, it was um, it was a bit overwhelming. But I was also young, so I, it was also fun. So uh, yeah, we we had a we had a cool team where we yeah we we, we just worked all the time and um, everything was fine. And yeah, we we learned a lot, all of us, I think. So, but then I um, then I quit my job again. And then I got a, then I got another race. Actually, uh, again, it was a, it was a significant race. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was, a, it was something. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it was worth a lot. And then again, then, then I actually took that, uh, then I took that offer. And of course, um, the the people from the salary division, they of course gossiped a little bit. So the I got the kind of a rumor for the person that actually was just just hunting or. or, or I got a rumor for being the person that was the best at uh, at salary discussions with my boss, because uh, the the company actually uh, was in a kind of a, a trouble, or you know, there there was a policy that we could not get any uh, any, lift, any lifts in, in the salary in, in any salary increases uh, for at least one or two years. Um, I don't know, I don't remember the the, the reasons and the arguments, but there, there was some that, that now we we all have to to try to yeah to to row the same way in the boat and uh, yeah no no one can get uh, salary uh, rises uh, uh, the increases uh, for 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 a couple of years and that's actually also why I I, tr- uh, I was not bluffing anything I I really wanted a new job so um, so I quit the job and then I got that salary increased anyway and then I stayed once again and then I stayed like a couple of years again and then uh, that time I actually um, I, I quit a- again for real and I have never I've, I've not regretted that and then I became a, a consultant uh, so then I'm a, from that day I was a freelance cons- uh, consultant and I've been there for the I've been that for the last like 15 years so and I've never um, never regretted that um, the choice it was um it's it's really interesting to be a consultant. Um, there are new tasks uh, and, and new impressions, and uh, you never feel like uh, when you are regular employed, you can actually st- you can start getting a bit uh, comfortable, and then maybe you, you don't have you you don't have to re- learn new stuff all the time. So maybe you'll, yeah, you you get a bit too comfortable in it. Yeah, if if you know what I mean. Uh, but when when you are a consultant, you always need to dig into the newest, uh, the, the newest things and you always need to be ahead or at least um, at, at least uh, at, at the same uh, at the same level as your as your, as your colleagues um, regarding the technology and what is possible and what is trending and what is the pros and cons for this new technology there's always something new uh, uh, yeah that's actually also something I'm a bit surprised about when I was a bit younger I thought okay at some point then there cannot be anything new right we, we, then we would know how to code a an application, <laughs> but that's that's always new framework. That's always new. Um, that's always new technologies um, coming in from the side. So th- this is a yeah, it's a never ending process, of course, of, of being a um, the developer and being in IT. There's there's always something to yeah to to learn and to read up on. And then of course there's there's different uh, sectors within the IT. There's you know, front end is kind of its its own subject. The CSS and all of the front end frameworks like React, Vue, JS, uh, Angular. Uh, that's that's kind of a sector for its, its or kind of a group or area for, for itself. And then there's machine learning, which is popping up now, um, or has been it's, it's, it has been very popular for some for a lot of years now. Um, but it's it's kind of the also an area for by itself because you need to be very strong with math and. You need to know a lot about data, um, 
And then of course, there's the backend and integration part, which I have actually done the most in. So that's like Spring Boot applications uh, integrating to to other systems using asynchronous uh, communication, like uh, yeah, Rapid MQs and uh, Kafka. Um, I've also been I've been a lot into the CI/CD and the DevOps of uh, the DevOps area. That's also an area for itself. How to uh, how to build an application, how to how to deploy an application and do that um, in an efficient way and also keep some monitoring on the, on, on the code like static code analysis, uh, sonar cube, um, OWASP for looking for vulnerabilities in the, in, in the, in the dependencies. That, that all, all of those things of, is of course um, part of the DevOps uh, also role to kind of help the teams with and, and help them set up the, these things. Then of course there's the there's the infrastructure as code there's like a Terraform where we have the Helm three scripts if we want to de- deploy something with uh, on a on a Kubernetes server um, there's also kind of an area by itself yeah Kubernetes is an area by itself and of course Docker containerization is a, is an area for uh, by itself um, but even though there comes there, there's so much new technology and there's so many new frameworks then uh, I, I think that I. When I get some, yeah. When there's something new, then I, c- I can kind of get into what what is the point with this and what what has they thought about it, and then it, it always resembles me about something else that I already know. That is that is one of the awesome things about uh, having some, yeah, having some uh, some experience. So I'm happy. It's my birthday. Thank you very much for um, for for watching. And have a great evening. And uh, yeah, uh, please continue to give me comments. I really like them. Bye-bye.